Hello everyone, I'm Michael Serapio. The federal government made a first step on a year's old promise today, introducing its roadmap for national pharmacare. Bill C-64 is the result of negotiations between the Liberals and the NDP to develop a plan by March the 1st. Contraceptive and diabetes drugs will be the first medications covered, with the government laying out a consultation process that will then determine the scope and the mechanics for a more comprehensive plan. This deal was achieved because our parties, every day, in every way, centered the conversation on how we can make things better. It was our only focus. We asked, how do we stand on the shoulders of all of the advocacy and work that was done before us to find answers and not differences? We found common ground only because we put our partisan interest and consideration last. I think that's what Canadians want. They want us focused on impact, on making a difference, on finding common ground. Today is a giant step forward for our health system. It was made possible by two adversaries asking what we have in common rather than what separates us. It happened because we rolled the dice that cooperation yields more than conflict. I hope that it represents the politics of our future. It certainly made the history of today. Well, with more on the plan announced today, we're joined by Yasser Nakvi, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Uh, Mr. Nakvi, always good to see you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Listen, when you look at the timeline of this, it's interesting because here we have a parliament that will wrap up in about a year's time. But when you look at the details of this plan, your, your timeline essentially lays out uh, a year for a committee of experts to determine how to operate and finance a public pharmacare program. Are you your party de facto kicking a decision on a public system down the road? Well, uh, first of all, uh, let me just say this, Michael. I think we, we've taken a really big step in making sure that we're providing the appropriate health care that Canadians need from coast to coast to coast. Um, uh, PharmaCare is, is, a, is a big part of, of, of that model that has been missing. So what we're doing is, is two really important things to start with. One, the legislation that we have tabled today sets the framework uh, around how PharmaCare uh, should be delivered to Canadians working along with our provinces and territories. So that leg legislative framework is extremely important. But number two, what we're saying is that we are going to start uh, by uh, giving uh, Canadians two really important uh, um, medications. One is uh, contraceptives, uh, so that it's available to, to, to Canadians uh, free of charge. And secondly, uh, uh, medication rela uh, related to diabetes, so that people can live their full life. So we are already taking two really important steps. There's other things in that legislation as well, such as the, the panel of experts that you talked about so that we can do further work around what, uh, what the national formula looks like. But right at the outset, I think we've taken a really big step forward today. Okay, I, I get that because, you know, diabetes, contraception, the coverage alone, as we heard it from the health minister, will be about uh, $1.5 billion. But, you know, if they were on their own, uh, perhaps that would be a big announcement. But, but we were talking about pharmacare here. Uh, and, and for people that, you know, have been listening to your party campaign on this more than once, this may not be the comprehensive system that they were hoping for. Is what you are presenting here truly enough for the Canadians who supported your party in the last election? Well, you know, I will, I will say, and I said this uh, when we made the announcement, that we're choosing to be pragmatic uh, as opposed to dogmatic. Uh, we're really taking a very thoughtful and prudent way in making sure that health care uh, for Canadians is there. And this is not the only thing, Michael, we're doing as we come out of this pandemic to ensure that uh, public health care system is there for Canadians. You take the kind of investment, for instance, we're making two hundred billion dollars over 10 years uh, across the country. The investment we're making for our seniors in uh, so that they can age with dignity. The Canadian dental care plan that, uh, that we have announced, uh, plus the farmer care. I mean, we are really sort of focused on making sure that the entire spectrum of health care is, is there for Canadians. 
by establishing a framework legislation is a really important step because this has never been done in Canada. Therefore, there, therefore this is a very historic uh, piece of legislation. But we're just saying we're not going to just uh, stop at developing a framework. Let's make sure that the women in Canada have access to contraceptives so they, they, they can make choices about uh, their own lives, about their own body, and uh, diabetes uh, medication that impacts so many Canadians Canadians is universally accessible to them. Okay, and I hear what you're saying about framework here, but but I wonder, did your government back itself into a corner? Because, you know, Pharmacare was the, the campaign platform, on the campaign platform, uh, more than once, again, by your party. But since then, you know, we've seen spending, a lot of spending on other programs. Did that spending essentially leave you not enough room to deliver the Pharmacare that your party originally envisioned? Yeah, I think we're taking a, a, very, a practical, prudent approach. Um, we re recognize that there's a lot of work that needs to happen in order to have a pharmacare uh, a, a plan put in place. Uh, we also want to make sure that we have um, different, we can compare different models. Uh, uh, you know, um, we we doing the uh, universal accessible uh, uh, provision of, of diabetic uh, medication and, and contract receptive but we're also working with with PEI for instance where they have a different model uh, in place because what we want to make sure that that when we get to a point where where we can make uh, eventual decisions we can compare as to what model works best and will serve Canadians in the most uh, optimum way Okay, you mentioned the PEI model, and that is a pilot program happening right now uh, in the province. And essentially, it covers some drugs, not all, and there is a, an income threshold to actually qualify for the program. You know, there has been this this talk amongst New Democrats that it was the Liberals just were not in favor of a public uh, system. Is that the case? Is the the more limited model ultimately what your government wants? Uh, we we want to make the best decisions in the best interest of, of, of Canadians and that's why we want to make sure that we canvas all different models before we could decide what works best for Canadians. So I think you can see this as, as and I think Minister uh, referred to as a, as a baseline that we're set, setting. We've got the PEI model uh, in place by working very closely with the NDP and by which, I, I, and I want to say this, uh, Canadians expect all political parties to work together. And I think this is a really good example where two political parties, the Liberals and the NDP are working together in not only developing a framework agreement, uh, a process as to how to um, implement that framework uh, once uh, if passed uh, by the parliament, but also having two really important uh, uh, medications available on a universal basis and then be able to compare and see what works best for Canadians. Yes, yeah, Sir Nakvi, always appreciate the time again. Thank you for this. Thank you.